All right, so let's log in. I click log in, takes you to the site here. Use your uh, username and password. Uh, when you first log in, you get your field tree on the left. Uh, scroll down, I'm gonna grab a advisor here and uh, select your field. You can also open this up and see the different soil types, zones, or you can pick higher up in the field tree and see your farms and some different uh, information here. But let's dive into the field. So with the field highlighted, you've got your map, uh, Google Map, good interface for uh, na easy navigation. Uh, and on each zone, what we're doing here, uh, we start with the Sergo by default, but you can load up other um, other soil data, soil test data, um, custom zones that maybe you've created using Virus or historical yield data. Um, and we key that information up so each soil type is unique. So pick a particular soil. You can see we've got topsoil, subsoil, uh, organic matter, pH, CEC, uh, and this is all derived from the, uh, the Sergo data. If you have actual data, you can, you can just click edit and change those or um, you can load up your actual soil test data. So here's a different zone, slightly different. Another one. Here's the sand. So you can see how the topsoil changes, subsoil colors change. Um, and what we do then is we project yields based on the soil, seed, and weather combination. And so the soil uh, supplies water. The blue dots are how wet is the crop. Um, crop changes throughout the season as does the soil moisture uh, and we project all that. So that's that zone. You can see all that information by zone or when you're at the field level this is a weighted average for the entire field. So you can kind of get an idea how, how good is this field uh, and then what's going on on the field as a whole. Uh, red dots are available nitrate. That last zone I was on, we didn't have red dots because we were short nitrogen on that sand. Uh, so that's why you weren't seeing the red dots. Um, and then what we do is the soil data, you can edit edit that soil data like I explained. Uh, you have to place a particular variety. So right now we've got 111 day corn, you can see up here selected. Uh, I can change that to 105. Uh, we're planted on April 12th. Um, let's leave that. And then we have our weather forecast, northwest Indiana normal. Uh, we're taking a 30 to 100 year average. Uh, you could also toggle that and say, oh, what if this field was in Alabama or something else. Uh, longer term, we can see options here for you to pick a particular year. Uh, right now we haven't built those yet. It's pretty easy for us to do, but just haven't done it. So if you've got a request, you can put that in. What I did there was I just changed the seed rate. So I can click this, and I'm going to straight rate 32,000 on the field. Um, and I'm just resetting this from a previous instance. Let's put 180 pounds at planting, straight rate on all my zones. So I got a flat nitrogen rate. Um, and I click this update projection button, and what that does then is it takes the soil that I've got on my field, uh, the variety that I have selected, the planting date, weather forecast, and it projects every single day into the future what my projected yield might be in each of these zones based on the forecast. So I've got sands and medium texture soils, 180, high organic matter down here at 213. Um, so each one of these zones then is available for you to see what's going on quickly, scan through those, or just look at this top line of where your, your summary is. Um, so soil, seed, and weather. Let me show you the seed. So I'm just going to grab a particular variety here. You've probably seen this corn growth uh, uptake charts. This is a little tutorial how to edit these at the advisor level. But basically what we did is we took a growth, growing degree days to get from one growth stage to the next, um, to the next. And uh, what's the water and nitrogen demands per day at each growth stage? and then what's the yield loss factor if we're short uh, at that growth stage. Uh, we pre-populated this uh, using a what I call a rubber banding process where we took 110 day corn, uh, shrunk it down to 105, stretched it out to 116, and so on and so forth. 
did all of our back testing on replicated plot data where we have the same planting date with a widespread of maturity. And out of that, our regressions, um, R-squared was about 0.78. So highly accurate with just these defaults. However, if you do have a unique variety, um, you know, maybe pollination is a little bit early, you can just click edit and you can come in here and say, well, you know, I pollinate a little bit early, change that, click save. I'm not going to do that because this one's, we're live right now. Um, if you do make that change at the advisor level, um, it's only available to you and your growers beneath you. So a change of this particular variety isn't going to change the whole database. It's only going to change it for your, your customers beneath you. That's a good way to protect you know, some proprietary research information that you've got um, as a seed advisor or a crop consultant that's done some agronomic research on different varieties. So we've got a lot of seeds. It's, it's easy for us to put those in uh, and then give them to you and let you kind of edit them from there. So, so with that, um, the result is you can pick different varieties and then it references that table. So we've got a 105 day selected, projected yield 179. Uh, let me jump to 112. And uh, it's the only thing I'm going to change is the plan or the variety. Same planting date, same forecast, same nitrogen, same seeding rate. Um, and what were we? 170 something. I think maybe we gained a bushel there or something by planting a longer maturity. I could change a planting date, plant it a week later and rerun this thing. See what that does. So again we're running the table on every one of these zones so we lost a couple of bushels there. And we're basically saying if the weather forecast is as we've defined, we have a seed profile as we've defined, uh, our soil is supplying moisture, we're mineralizing nitrogen from the organic matter, uh, we're applying nitrogen at this time, how does that impact um, stress on that plant at that seeding rate? So it gives you a lot of flexibility to try a lot of things out in the off-season. Uh, in, in season, we update it with actual weather data. Uh, the weather data comes from a couple of different sources. Uh, we use Weather Underground for the uh, basically everything except uh, our rain data. And the rain data actually comes from another supplier. Uh, we license this NexRad radar-based rainfall data, which is now at a one kilometer resolution. So about every half mile you get a virtual rain gauge. Uh, and we put that kind of at the mathematical center of the field. So each field gets its own virtual rain gauge. So the farms that are you know, two miles away might have a little bit more rain, a little bit less. You know, the ones that are 20 miles away, you don't have to drive there and check it. You can, you can know pretty quickly what's going on. Um, and with that, we also do uh, if I jump up here to the farm level, some reports, um, shrink this down. This particular one we've got, um, we put all of your projected yield, I've only got three kind of demo fields in here, and uh, the limiting factor and the growth stage, we haven't planted yet, so the growth stage is none. Uh, this will change, so it's current as of today. Uh, and then an email report that we send you has an, another column here out to the side and we trigger that report if you get a quarter of an inch of rain on one field somewhere on one of your farms. So the farmer can get his email alert, uh, the advisor can also be alerted um, and he can log in and see that if he wants or he can just you know save that email, uh, track his growth through the season. Uh, Another fun report that we like in our business is, um, so you get planted, you have different varieties, different planting dates, and now you want to track and say, okay, I want to show up at Tassel, I want to view my projected dates of that. And this is basically just a, a different way to view the same kind of information here below, but say, okay, when, when do I expect to be at Tassel? And uh, this is saying July 8th based on my early April planning. <clears throat> and this is dynamic, so if it's a hotter year, you're going to, this date is going to move up closer to you. If it's a cooler year, the date's going to get further away. So, And this changes and automatically updates every night. Uh, we basically hit the 
uh, update projection button, the big button for every zone and every field, every farm, every night. So this number can change, or that date can change. Uh, and you can you can play around and see that uh, pretty pretty neat feature taking all that stuff into into consideration. So let's go back to our field here and uh, I'll show you one last feature, and then we're gonna uh, show you a solver. But the uh, big thing here is if when you start, you put in your variety, put in your day, you can load this field. This is a highly variable field. You know we've got high organic matter and some blow sand all in the same thing. And we calculate this solver advantage right here. And what that is, is what if I had variable rate seed? What if I had variable rate nitrogen? How many bushels could I increase my yield on this field by unlocking that, that information and, you know, doing that on the field? And this is based on that variety, this date, that forecast, and these soils. So, um... I'm going to cut and then reopen this and show you this if you want, so stay tuned.